All right, y'all. I think this might be it for us. Um, it's okay, though. Y'all have particular questions that you want to look at, or do you understand what what the quiz is is including? Uh, most of those are going to be from exams three, but I think there are some exams two questions, and uh, they'll have to do with household circuits or RC circuits. Um, and I'll just this is exam three from last semester, so. Uh, Sort of have to just go through them. I don't have a list of these, but you know, anytime you see questions about household circuits, they're usually clumped together. Make sure you know the the three different safety devices: the GFI, the grounding, and uh, what was the third one? Oh, the circuit breaker. Uh, particularly, be careful that you can differentiate between the GFI and the circuit breaker. Just to remind you, the GFI or the GFCI that it turns off if I out exceeds or is less than, excuse me, is less than I in um, and the circuit breaker turns off if I exceed some value, some maximum value, 15, 20 amps or whatever. So those look really similar. So make sure you understand those. Um, and then uh, for the circuit breaker, I often give a question like this, number seven. We, I think we did this question in class, actually. If I want to know what is the maximum allowed current for the circuit breaker, uh, I first just calculate the current for each individual device. I, the voltage is 120, and so I is equal to P over V, excuse me, P divided by V. So that's power 1,200 watts divided by 120 volts. That would be 10 amps. So 10 amps for that. 720 divided by 120 is 5 amps. 240 divided by 120 is 2 amps. So I have 17 amps operating on this. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I had 15 amps operating, and then I added 2 amps. So somewhere between 15 to 17 amps, that's where I kicked off. So it looks like A is the right answer. That, that circuit breaker is is uh, good for 17 amps. Is that right? 12, 5, yeah, 17 amps. So it would kick off when it reaches that current. Okay? I think y'all probably okay on the household circuits. Am I right? Y'all good on household circuits? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, I can go through these exams three. Let me make this page smaller. Um, so, you want me to do that? Go through each exam and circle the questions? Okay. All right. So, this whole page, this is uh, last semester, that whole page, uh, 10, and then it stops there. Um, on the next exam, this whole page, this is spring 22, 5 and 6 on the next page, 1 through 6. And then for spring 21, 1 through 4, I think that's it. Spring 20, uh, 1 through 3, I think there's probably more on that, uh, number 7, and number 8. Stop me if I'm going too fast, okay. Uh, spring 19, I have uh, 2 through 4. On spring 19, spring 18, 1 through 2, uh, 6, 7, and 8. That's it. Uh, yeah, num spring 19. I had two through four, and that was all. And then spring 17, remember you want to go back to spring 15, 
uh, spring 17, 1 through 4, and 6. That's it. And then for 16, uh, that must have been exam 2. So we'll go back and look at exam 2 as well. Uh, spring 16, nothing for exam 3. But for spring 15, it would be 4. Five and six. Four, five, and six. All right. If you want to look at the exams too as well. There are fewer on that. It's just we didn't have. I usually get past that point, but let's see. All right. So this is exam two, starting with spring 23. Nothing on spring 23. Uh, shouldn't be anything on spring 22 either. No. Nothing on spring 21. Nothing on spring 20. Nothing on 19 or 18. This is spring 17. Nothing on that. 16. Uh, 16. Spring 16 does have some. Uh, 14, 15, and 16. Number 18. And 19. I got that. And then spring 15. Does have some. That would be numbers 23 through 25. That was spring 15. 23 through 25. Okay. Does that help? probably actually pretty helpful for y'all, right? Uh, so, you know, your quiz will come from those questions, 10 of those questions. A lot of them are the same, so if you practice one, it'll you'll probably see very similar ones to uh, each of those. But are there particular questions that y'all want to look at today? Well, do some RC circuits. I think that's probably the more difficult of them. I mean, the, the home circuits, you just know it or you don't. Uh, for the RC circuits, it's, you know, being able to manipulate that exponential function uh, and also knowing what the graph looks like. So here, I have a capacitor that discharges over a time of 10 time constants, and I want to know what represents the voltage. If you look on your uh, equation sheet for discharging, let's see your voltage will start out big and it will get small. So that means that that equation is going to be e to the minus t over rc times v naught. So that's the equation for a discharging capacitor, voltage of a discharging capacitor. And the function that looks like that is going to be d. Right? Your function is either, and when you have one of these questions, it's either going to be this shape or this shape. And so you just need to decide, is it an increasing exponential function or a declining exponential function? Uh, if it's discharging voltage, then that means it's going to start out with a big voltage and go down to a small voltage. If you can't think through that on what the capacitor is doing, that's fine. Just look at the equation sheet. If it's e to the minus t over rc, it's going to be d. But if the equation has this, 1 minus e to the minus t over rc, then that means it's going to be c. So that's probably your easiest approach. But I'd love for you to be able to think about the capacitor and what it's doing uh, before and then be able to describe the exponential function. But if you're not there yet, that's fine. Um, just look at the equation sheet. Um, probably going to have a question like number nine, where you just have to calculate the current. Uh, let's just show you the equation sheet for that, just to make sure we're clear on where this is coming from. Remember the equation sheet in your back in the back of your book did have an error. I forget what it was. I think it was for voltage. So, but I'll give you the correct one. The one on line is correct. I, uh, I'm 
If I go to our equation sheet, um, the ones that I'm thinking about are right here, where I look at my voltage. So see here with my voltage discharging right here, the one that we just saw. On this question, I'm looking for the current, uh, a current that is charging. So it initially has no charge, so I know that it's charging. And the current for a charging or a discharging capacitor looks like this. So your current will always start out big and then it gets small. So my current is given by V over R, that's just my maximum current, times E to the minus T over RC. Uh, that's going to be V over R is going to be the 16 divided by 4 mega ohms. So that would be 4 microamps. 1 over mega is micro. So I'll just list it as 4 microamps times E to the minus 6 over R times C, which is 2 times 4. That's equal to 8. So tau here is my time constant. That's equal to R times C. That's uh, 4, or excuse me, 2 microfarads, 4 mega ohms. Uh, that's going to be equal to 8 seconds. So I do 4 times E to the minus 6 over 8. Uh, practice this in your calculator. Just make sure that you know how to do that in your calculator. You don't use the exponential function that often, so make sure that you know how to do it. It's going to be 4 times e to the negative 3 fourths, or 0.75. I get 1.9. So 1.9 microamps. Okay? Definitely going to have to do that, where you have to calculate with the exponential function. I don't think that I had any questions where you have to find the time. That's a little more complex. We might have to do that on the free response, but I don't think there are any on the quiz. Um, here, also, if I'll need to understand the time constant and the time to fully charge or discharge, remember, it requires 10 time constants to fully charge or discharge. All right, so here, if I require 30 seconds, that means 30 seconds is equal to 10 times my time constant. That means my time constant is 3 seconds. The time constant is not the time to discharge or discharge. It's just a characteristic time. Uh, and so that is equal to R times C. Uh, here, I'm told that R is 3 mega ohms. That means that C is 1. So if this is 3 mega ohms, that means this is 1 microfarad to give me this time constant of 3 seconds. All right, so let's look. Let's see if there are any different ones. They're usually pretty similar. Um, you know, that's all the same as what we did. Make sure you can identify the graphs just like we did. That's really the questions that I'm going to ask you the uh, current charge or voltage on a capacitor at a certain time, ask you the time to fully charge or discharge a capacitor, or like the previous one where I give you that time and you have to find R or C. Uh, or I might just ask you outright, what is the time constant? And to find the time constant, it's just R times C. Those are the different classes of questions. I mean, that's, that's really all there is. It's, it's not, a, not a complicated quiz. There's not, not a whole lot on it. I really want big grades on this quiz. You want me to, right? You want big grades on this quiz? 100%. Yeah, have other particular questions? I could do more, but it'd be more of the same. No? No? All right. I'll be there if y'all have particular questions you want to ask, but we'll stop there. Uh, I appreciate y'all coming.